If you've got a whole load of date information in Excel and you want to display it as either days and months and years and values, or perhaps you want the days and stuff to show for reporting purposes, then there's a whole load of built-in ways to do that in Excel. I've got four of them and I'm gonna show you them right now. Hi, I'm John, Qualified Accountant with 25 years real world Excel experience. And if you want better Excel results faster, then you're in the right place. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any time saving tips. Right, what if you wanna use the actual data? You need to add days together, for example. You need to um, be able to like filter and sort by year and things like that. How are you gonna go about that? So when I'm using functions and formulas, the first thing I always do in Excel, especially if I've got a lot of data and I've got sort of a thousand sort of items here roughly, turn it into a table. So control T or insert table, make sure you've got the headers thing ticked. You get some normally pretty awful design come up, but my personal favorite on the Excel defaults is this like gray one, which I always then turn into the default. And why have I done that? Well, simply now, when I use a function, if I type equals that, for example, all of a sudden the whole thing appears, obviously I need to make the column a bit wider, but you know, I've basically gone, it instantly adds a column and the function in it. I'm just hitting Control Z there to undo what I've done. So say I want the year now, right? I want to get the year out of this data. What am I going to do? There's an actual function called year. I hit tab, it wants a serial number. I give it a date, which is a serial number incidentally. Close those parentheses and hit enter. And I get an entire load of rubbish, right? And why do I get a whole load of rubbish? It's because it's genuinely turned that field into a year number, an actual number, but then it's formatted it as a date. And it only did that because I inserted it on a table which was next to a date. So if you see something surprising like this, don't, don't be alarmed. So I'm gonna highlight all of that and format it as a number, which is control shift and the hash key, rather than control the hash key with the date, control shift and the hash key. It formats it as a general number. And you can see now we've extracted the year and it is genuinely a year. If I add that year to um, that year, I get, as you can see, something around the 4,000 mark. So I'll just undo that, of course. Right, so that's the year. What about the month? Well, probably won't surprise you to hear that there is a function called month and you can just pick up, so you can't pick up the year, can you? You can pick up the date again and off you go, you've got the month and believe it or not i won't go through them all but you have day as you can see there you also have um, hour and minute and even second as well so you can pull out all your year month dates and the beauty of this is that we've got access now to actual numbers that we can use in analysis. So we could pivot this data, for example, and have the year as a column or something like that, or the, or the month, or we could combine these to create sort of text fields that describe kind of years and dates. Now, the, these functions that I'm talking about are members of my 33 fantastic functions for Excel. They're on my cheat sheet, available with the link in the description for a completely free download. So get your hands on that. There's also every other function in Excel described in full as a bonus on a separate sheet in there in case you kind of want more. OK, so here's the way in which you can split out different elements of a date using just custom formatting. Now this is particularly useful if you're talking about reporting and I'll give you a warning in a minute as to why I think it's good for reporting and probably not so good if you're going to then use the data further on in your spreadsheet. So we've got a list of dates here and if I'll copy and paste those into the year column and if I hit control one which brings up the uh, format cells um, dialog box, which of course you could get to on the menu if you like. You can see it's a custom format, and this is the custom format code. And you might have, you know, you might be various date codes and stuff. And if you go down to custom, you'll see all sorts of odd codes. But you can see you've got DD, MM, year, year, and it's coming up with this example here, and in this one, 
that example. So you can actually see, well, these is months and days. So if I just delete all of that, I'll get a number 17 appear, which is obviously the format of this 17 at the end there. And if I turn that into put another two Ys, I'll get the four digit year. So there we go. A custom format of Y, 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 give you a four digit year. That's straightforward. OK, so in a similar vein, if I copy and paste that to the month and the day and this one, if I format that so make that a two digit month, for example, and hit OK. And this one, same kind of thing. The DD element will give me a two digit day. So there we go. I formatted the month, the day and the year quite straightforwardly. But we could do plenty of other things. So you probably saw as I was typing there, different things were, were coming up. So let's just mess about a bit with this format. So in here then, let's try the day first. So a single D will give me a single number, i.e. the number of the day. And a double D will give us, put leading zeros or if required on. Three Ds, will give us the day as a three digit, uh, three letter day. And four days will give us the full day name. So that will give a, you know, so if I did that, I get the day of the week showing, which could be very, very useful indeed. Alternatively, the same thing is true of the month, single month, single M for the month, uh, one digit, two, two digits, three, the month in terms of uh, Jan say, and then four M's will give us the full month name. And of course, I can combine these by putting in um, D, 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 for example, and a space dash January uh, or even D, D. You can put more than one in. Um, and then the Y, 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 Y. So I could do something as uh, crazy as that to spell the whole thing out. So. That is a lot of flexibility with custom formats on dates. You can get it showing whatever you want. But, and it's a major, major but here, there is a heavy warning on this, right? I'm just going to hide this one gets in the way. And the warning is this, that these might look like numbers, right? Rather than dates, but they really are not numbers. When you hover over them, you, you can actually see in the formula bar, they're still the full date, even though it says the number 24. It comes up here as the 24th of the 10th, 2022. So if I were to say, right, let's add 20, 20, like 24 plus one, right? Now you might expect on the face of it to get the answer 25. When I hit enter, I get the answer 87,594. What on earth is going on, you know? And the reason is that these are just as I said before, they're dates. If I num format that as a normal number, right, which is Control Shift One, you can see it's forty-four thousand something, and the same with that. And so that is why this is added up to that huge number. So you just got to be really careful, and that is why I say use them for reporting and presentation purposes rather than some kind of like actual piece of data. Right, moving on, a third way that you can extract the elements of a date out is to quickly put it into a pivot table. So if you're, um, you know, if you're doing this as a, a quick one-off and you want to analyze stuff very quickly, you don't want functions and things like that, really quickly, just knock out a pivot table. And a really quick way of doing that is to turn it into a table with Control T, if your data is like that. And then on the table design menu, you have summarize with pivot table. And I'm just going to put this in the same sheet up here. Hit OK, just reduce that column ammo. And then if you whack a date into a pivot table as a row, um, it's going to probably do all sorts of strange things depending on your settings. But the key things that you need really are on the design, your report layout if you do tabular, and I've got my default set to that. And then anything in that date field, if you go on the group, do a right click and group you'll see you have these options here, right? And you can break out dates into its consti any constituents parts down to seconds, but you also get the bonus of quarters, which you can't get if you use functions or formulas. So 
it's well worth sort of adding that. So I'll leave that on the default there. Open it up, we now have years, quarters and months listed and you can see all of our data and we've now also on our pivot table fields here, we have these as separate um, items so we can spread, you know, use quarters as columns for example, get rid of the date entirely, get rid of the month and we can do something like that where we now have a pivot table you know, if we had any additional data in here by year, by quarter. So it's a really quick way of breaking stuff out and it gives you some extra options and stuff. Again, top tip though, pivot tables, leave them for reporting and analysis. Uh, don't, you know, using them in the middle of spreadsheets is a risky business. Um, they're, they're volatile because they can change and they don't refresh necessarily automatically and stuff. So linking formulas to pivot tables probably not your, your best idea, generally speaking. Way four, Power Query. Unbelievably feature-rich part of Excel and massively underused, although it's becoming more and more prevalent these days. So how are we going to do this? Uh, first off, we want to turn it into a table. Similar reason to pivot tables and using formulas and stuff. It's just a great way of getting stuff in quickly. You don't have to mess up. Control T, there we go. Right, so the Power Query is on the data menu and it's not really called Power Query, it's normally called Get and Transform Data or something like that. But if we drag in this table and we get a new editor open up here, and it's called it you know, Table Free, who cares really what it's called at the moment. And you can see it's pulled in the data and it's put no time on, yours might have a time. And if we click on this little button next to it here, um, you can see we can tell it that it is a date and it might be with a time, but this one's a date. And we tell it it's date. And as soon as we tell it it's a date, it formats it as a, properly as a date. And on the add column menu, we get highlighted a date uh, drop down list. And on that date, we have all sorts of things that we can add as new columns. So for example, we can add the year, right? But we can also add things like the start of the year, which is the 1st of January in that year, or the end of the year, which might help us um, say whether or not it's a leap year, for example. Right? We can also add months and quarters as per the pivot table, weeks even, which is another option that you can't get on any of the other four, and days as well. And on days, we can have the day, the day of the week, which is fantastic. That gives it as a number there. But we can also have on day, name of the day, day of the year as well. So unbelievable amount of options there um, to create and break out dates in all sorts of ways that you just would take forever in a day to do with functions and formulas or pivot tables. How on earth do you then get that back into Excel? Well, it's unbelievably straightforward. You hit on close and load to, and you'll get a little dialog box here, and you say you want it in a table, and you can have it wherever you want, but for the purposes of demonstration here, I'm just gonna put it sort of next to the old table and hit okay, and out, out it comes, uh, sort of huge long, big long list of all that data that I did, and the great thing about Power Query actually is that it's kind of, you just need to refresh it. It's a bit like a pivot table. So if I change this to 2018 and um, say February, let make it the Valentine's Day in 2018. Um, you can see this line here has not changed, but as soon as I do uh, Control Alt F5, which is the refresh button, it changes. I get all of this information updated. Did you know Valentine's Day is the 45th day of the year? I didn't know that. So Power Query, another immense amount of options available on that if you need further ways of splitting stuff down. And as long as you're prepared to refresh your data and stuff, it's all going to work fine. So there you go, four different ways of breaking up dates in Excel, depending on what you want to use it for and where you want to go next after you've done it. If you want that cheat sheet, by the way, with the 33 fantastic functions, links in the description, or you can go to ml.uprexcel.com forward slash functions01. 
If you enjoyed that video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to see more and give me your views and comments about what you'd like to see me cover to save you more and more time in Excel. See you soon.